Okay. Um, so today, day two, um, we're going to take uh, a little deeper look at this NIO uh, server that we wrote last night in Kotlin. Uh, I'm going to give a bit of a, a recap for anyone who tried to watch the previous stream but may have had some troubles following, following along because the video um, wasn't, wasn't choppy but it was uh, it was not staying in sync with the audio um, and what I was doing pretty quickly so when I was trying to show things in documentation um, it may not have been super clear so uh, we're gonna go over just do a quick brief overview of what we did last night and then um, we're going to talk about um, attaching information to um, selectors and talk about different ways to um, keep track of um, the multiple different connections that you're going to get via a single thread uh, when using NIO, right? So, um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about what we did last night. So, so last night we created this very basic server, uh, server class, server abstraction. Um, we open up a, a server socket channel on localhost. We bind it to a port. We configure it as uh, non-blocking, uh, and then we open the selector up. What is that noise? Okay, it's gone. Um, so yeah, so then we open up this selector. And the selector, again, and I have the documentation up over here, is, is basically the, the, the multiplexer, right? So this is what allows us to handle multiple concurrent connections or multiple connections uh, via one thread. Uh, so this server is running in one thread and we can handle um, a whole bunch of different uh, different connections, right? So if you've ever used Node.js, uh, this is this is the pattern that Node.js uses, right? Um, um, if you've ever used uh, a non-blocking web framework in Java, such as Netty or Vertex, this is what's being used under the hood, this, this pattern. Um, I don't believe Netty actually uses these APIs specifically, I think that there's some issues with uh, the amount of garbage that the the NIO, the standard library NIO APIs use. Um, so I think they have their own actual implementation of some of this, but um, but yeah. So 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 you go ahead and, and basically you open up a socket, uh, you open up uh, our uh, selector, and then basically you you tell that socket, hey tell this selector about some set of events, right? And um, in this case, we're basically concerned with being able to accept new connections, right? So um, we're basically saying, hey, wake me up uh, whenever uh, I need to uh, accept a connection or whatever there's a event on this server socket that requires accepting, right? Um, uh, and so then we have our implementation of run. Again, this server is, is a runnable. It's something that we can run uh, in a single thread. If you go up here, you'll see we create the server. This is just a simple main function. We create the server, we give it a port. Um, we, we pass that server to a thread, and then we just start the thread. There's nothing, nothing too, uh, too exciting about, about that. Um, so, so in this run function, what are we doing? we um, basically loop um, forever uh, until either our socket channel gets closed um, or our thread gets interrupted. And we're calling this selector.select method. And so what this is doing, uh, and I'll pull up the documentation for this. Um, so what this is doing is, is basically saying, um, select with no value pass in as a parameter is a blocking call and so that's why we have to run it you know in a in a thread 
Um, and basically what this does is this basically blocks until there's some activity uh, on uh, this server socket that we have that we're interested in, right? And so we told the socket channel what we were interested in uh, by telling, hey, I'm interested in accept. And again, there's there's a bunch of, there's a couple different things that you can do. So there's, uh, you can say, um, I'm interested in accept. I'm interested in um, connection operations. I'm interested in uh, write and read operations, right? And so all you're doing is just flip-flopping back uh, back and forth um, in your while loop saying, do I need to accept? Do I need to connect? Do I need to read? Do I need to write? Uh, nothing, nothing too crazy. So, um, so in our case, I'm actually using um, selector dot select with a timeout. Um, and I mainly just did this to give people an idea of, of how, um, how this works. Right. And so I'll show you, we'll, we'll run this real quick here. Um, and we'll say uh, select uh, uh, selector is ready. Um, and then uh, basically I'll, I'll print out in here. We're, we're not going to actually see anything in here um, because we're not going to do anything. But this will just give you a, a sense that there is a thread running. We're in this this essentially nearly infinite while loop until we either interrupt or the socket gets closed. And um, when we give it a timeout, it times out every second uh, and basically kind of goes through and says, okay, can we do some work? Can we do some work? Otherwise, this is just going to block forever, right? So let's go ahead and run this. Right, so this is running and basically we're seeing selector is ready every second. Now notice we're not seeing key is ready and that's because nothing is trying to connect, right? And so if we get rid of this timeout, this will essentially block forever um, and will not wake up um, after this because it, it never times out. It's still waiting for something to happen, right? Um, so, uh, so that's how that works, okay? And so, um, after select, you, um, you have to ask it for selected keys, right? And so selected keys is, uh, is basically the, the selected key set, right? These are the keys that are, uh, available and ready and have, um, have work or things to do that you might be interested in, right? So in our case, um, we're going to be uh, woken up if there are any keys that are in the op accept uh, opt accept state. Um, and so we can then go ahead and say every time give us the list of keys, iterate over those keys, and then basically we're checking if the key is acceptable, and then we're calling this method accept, right? And so when we do this, we're, we're, we're passing uh, the key, right? We're, we're saying there's this selection key here that, that has some, some need to accept. Um, and uh, that, that channel on that selection key, right, is, is the server socket channel, right? That's the, that's the actual socket, right? So we're, we're, we're grabbing that channel and we're casting it. Um, and basically we're calling accept on it, right? So we're saying we accept this connection um, and that's essentially the, the client, right? That's the, that's the client socket. Um, so we go ahead and accept that. Uh, and in this case, again, we're, we're doing NIO. So we need to configure that, that inbound, uh, that, that socket as non-blocking, just like we did um, up here when we created our server socket, right? So, so just because this server socket is, is non-blocking doesn't mean that, that this thing needs to be blocking, right? You can mix and match however you want, right? Um, and uh, so then again here, and, and this, is, this is up to you, right? You can choose to register for whatever you want. Um, in our case, uh, we just registered for read. Um, and then there's something here, right, where we just we just write, right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of this for now because it's a bit confusing. But uh, we'll we'll come back to this because what I really want to talk about is is uh, 
is attributes, right? And so to uh, just to show you that this is working, um, um, we are going to do this, right? So we're going to print out that we've we've accepted a new client socket. We're going to go ahead and run this, and basically whenever we get a new inbound connection, it should print accepting a new client socket. And so we are uh, we're just going to use curl right now, and it, it's curl's not going to work. It's just going to hang, but it will at least simulate a connection to localhost, and then later on we can write a client that will actually kind of like ping back and forth and do something for real, right? So if we go ahead and do this, we should see that this thing has accepted a new client socket. Now curl on this end is, is waiting for data. And again, we haven't sent it or given any data. So this isn't, this isn't gonna finish, but we can cancel this. And you can see that every time we do this, we get a new client socket, right? So, uh, so that's that. Okay, so we're, we're accepting uh, a new socket. Um, we have this, this socket, right? And this thing continues to loop, uh, continues to loop and do work as normal. Now, um, the next thing that, you're, that we need to talk about is, is how do we keep track of all of these different keys or all of these different channels or inbound connections, right? Because, um, the, we, we've told the server that we're interested in um, accept, and we've also, uh, you know, told the server that we're interested in 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 reading, right? And um, but the but the challenge is is that when we when we get this inbound read event, right, we're going to probably do something like read uh, into a buffer, right? And um, you have to, NIO doesn't keep track of any of these sockets or any of these buffers for you. You have to keep track of those, right? And uh, you can keep track of them in a number of different ways. I'm gonna show you uh, one way to keep track of it that's uh, maybe a bit naive, um, but it, it, it's okay to do it this way. Um, you just have to be careful with uh with 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 what the trade-offs are right so um let's take a look at this register method right so so when we register um there are a couple of different and let's go to documentation for this selectable channel so when we when we register there's a couple different register methods that we can use um, so the, the one that we're using right now is we're just registering a selector and we're telling it the, the states that we're interested in. Um, and you'll see is invocation of this convenience method of the form this behaves exactly in the same way as invocation of register with this null. Uh, so, so what is that, right? So let's go up here. And so this is actually an interesting method, an interesting way to help keep track of your clients, right? So Again, this is, does the same thing as the reg, the other register method. It registers this channel with a given selector, selector and returns a selection key. Now you might think, hey, like, oh, maybe I should um, store this key somewhere, maybe in a hash map so that I have access to all the keys. But you really don't need to do that because um, uh, the, the, the selector itself has a handle to all these. So you don't need these. And, and again, the selector is going to tell you when something is ready for reading or writing. So capturing this and keeping track of this and, and doing it that way doesn't really, there's no need for that, right? So, um, but what I would like to do is, is I would like to be able to, um, when I get a read or accept or write event, I would like to know which thing this is, which connection this might be, right? And so, um, this attachment is, is one way to do that. So the parameters, right? So if we look at the parameters, this attachment um, is the, the attachment for the resulting key and it, and it may be null, right? And so what, what is that, right? And so basically what, what this API is letting us do is, is we can attach any, any object that we want to this selection key 
uh, and then we can pull it out later um, and it, it kind of it, it's basically this extra metadata that you can that you can say hey uh, NIO API I want you to keep keep track of this for me and I want you to attach it to this this connection or this this uh, this channel uh, so so let's let's do that and let's just store some simple uh, some simple information on here and and um, see see what happens right um, and we might need to go a little bit further with this um, to actually uh, get it back out but 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 we can do that right so um, let's do this let's say um, client ID is um, the client socket as inet. That's a right. This is going to be a um, accepts a connection. So one of these should be a inet socket address um, socket channel. Uh, so let's take a look at this uh, Java socket channel. Um, this should be uh, an inet socket address, but let's let's use the debugger here and just just inspect this a little further, right? Because um, if we do client socket dot socket. Um, this should be an inet address of some sort. Um, so let's do that, right? So socket equals this. Right, so if we debug this, um, this socket, I believe, is going to be a, an inet address. And what we can do is we can then attach the metadata, like an easy, like a string on here that says, like, this client you know, is this host an IP or whatever, right? So let's go ahead and debug this. Um, and we'll go ahead and curl this. Um, and we can take a look. Socket is socket adder. Yeah, socket adapter, right? Um, okay, yeah, so this is, this is okay. So um, you'll notice that we can't, um, uh, actually we can do, address dot address um, and maybe we'll capture the port uh, uh, we get the port off of here right yeah local port um, so then we'll create a string and then we'll pass this client ID on to here. And I'll put this up here. All right, so um, let's run this again and we'll basically we'll just look at this client ID, right? And see what we get. All right, so we're curling this uh, and the client ID is not what I expected oh this is um yeah this is probably a byte array huh yeah uh are there any there's probably some nice methods on here oh you know we could probably just use the inet address right so let's just do um client sockets dot sockets dot inet address uh, do two string on this. This probably is, yeah, nice. Okay. Um, so we can do that two string on there and that should look a little better. Uh, yeah, this is Colin trying to get fancy and nice. So we'll fix this up like that, right? So that should look better. So let's restart this. Um, so basically what we should see is, is one, two, seven, oh, 
one. No. What are we doing wrong here? Address. Why is that the fine ad? Oh. So we should see this, yeah, right. So, so basically we're saying, hey, we're getting a, a, an inbound connection from, from 127.01, our local host, right? Um, and, it's, and it's coming in over, over that port, right? So that's, that's an identifier. Now, if we were to be getting this from outside our local host, this would be different, right? And so that way we could uniquely identify clients. So, um, uh, so that was good. All right, so give me just a second. I will be right back. I need to look at something here. So, um, so yeah, so, so basically we're grabbing this client ID and, and marking this on here. And I'm actually, um, I think, um, if I were to ping this from a separate machine, um, This would, this would work. So let's actually, let me give that a try real quick. I don't know, this, this should work. Um, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna curl from another machine on the network. Um, and this should hit. And I think I'll get a different IP, right? So that'll show that this like actually works. So we do this, we say, we're basically curling um, 10, 301. Yeah, right. So, okay, so this is, this is another, I'm basically pinging this or curling this from my laptop, right? So this is a different uh, IP address on my network. Um, so this is coming from 192.168.11.57. Uh, and it's coming in on port 1031, right? So this, this shows you that this not only gets connections from the local machine, but also from, from anything on the, on the network, right? So any, any, anybody can send a, send a message over a socket to this and, and it picks it up, right? So, okay, so this is good. So this is what we're looking for, right? Um, so, so again, you know, we, we've, we've sent this, uh, 
we've, we're going to attach this identifier. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to grab this um, client ID whenever um, whenever we get a read. And then we're going to print that out, right? So let's do this. So we're going to say client is read. We'll say client is readable. OK. Uh, now we're not actually going to do the read, but but I'm just going to show you that, that this that you can basically attach this thing here uh when a when an incoming connection comes in and then you can actually read this out later to help you identify which channel this is right and so why is this important so again um you might get data in spurts uh or or um not all at once over a given socket right and so um you because this is nio and you don't you, you can't block for any given client, you need to, to read a little bit chunk and then give other people the ability to read, right? So in this case, you, you need to keep, for example, you might need to keep track of a buffer, right, for a given client, because you may not have read uh, all the data off a given socket, but you, you can't sit there and wait for them to continue sending you data. You might need to give other people uh, a chance to, to send you data, right? So this is, this is, this is really a fundamental piece and uh, thing that you have to do in NIOs is that, again, because we're multiplexing, if you have you know a thousand connections and this one thread, those thousand connections really shouldn't block for any any longer than than they need to, right? It's got to be a very short uh, short amount of time. Um, so um, so so this um, will will be there um, every time it comes in. Um, and so we're basically just going to grab this off. Now, uh, the challenge with this is, is that curl will not uh, do, cur curl doesn't send any information, right? It's just opening up a socket and, and expecting a read, right? So we basically need a way to open a socket to this um, Okay, so where were we? So yeah, so the problem is is that when we when we curl, right, um, our our key or our socket never becomes readable because curl doesn't actually send anything down this pipe, right? But I suspect, and and we can we can do this one of two ways. We can either find a tool, a command line tool that lets us like open a connection and then just send arbitrary data because we don't care. We just need to make it readable. Um, or we can write a basic client socket connect and then send data down. But I have a feeling, um, why do I feel like Telnet can do this? Uh, I haven't used this in years, but let's, yeah, yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, let's just create, a, let's just create a client here um, real quick. And it'll make this happen a lot faster, right? So we're gonna do new class and we'll call it client. Um, and uh, uh, we'll do a main 
Um, uh, this will be a socket. Um, uh, inet socket address dot. Um, so this is going to be localhost, and we're going to connect to uh, what's our port ten. 10301, right? So 10301. So we're going to connect to this. Um, creates a socket address for the IP address as well. Credit call port is. Oh, but this is just the socket. Um, do 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 man. Client side socket programming. I do not remember how to do this. Client socket. Um, do do do. socket um, we just want the client socket that's the server that's the client yeah just new socket okay that's what I thought all right so new socket uh, we're gonna want a local host for that um, Socket dot uh, uh, okay, so then we can do uh, what can we do here? Get input stream. Uh, yes, yeah, so then we can do in, uh, input equals uh, input dot. basically say um, do 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 uh, byte buffer dot wrap oh wait a minute what is this taking this is just taking an array of bytes right yeah okay so we can just do this uh, hello world or hello server dot uh, two byte array right and just to be relatively safe and smart, we can just do UTF-8, right? So this should um, basically open up a socket and then um, open up a socket and then uh, send that data immediately once it's open uh, to the server. And then I think we should see this, right? So uh, let's go ahead and do this. So let's run our server. So our server is running, and then if we run the client, it should start. Um, do, do, do. No? Oh, man, I don't remember how to do this. Uh, Oh yeah, maybe it's it's the output stream, not the input stream. Right? Is that yeah, right. Yep, yep, yep. The server's still running, we can run this connection refused. Uh, oh the server's not running, so that would be why. Alright, so the client, uh, we're gonna go ahead and 
So now the server's running, we're gonna write to the client and then it should finish. And basically, so yeah, so so see, you'll see here, right, this, uh, and this is gonna constantly ping, but basically we now, we got a connection from the client and they pushed data to us. And basically this thing is waking up and saying, hey, you know, there's data waiting on this socket for you to read. Um, and um, and so because we're not reading it right away and we're not, you know, saying, hey, we've read from this thing, it's it's constantly, uh, constantly selecting, right? So we can slow this down again. Um, we'll run the server. Let's run this server again, and we can we can slow this down so that you can see what's happening, right? So the so client again, it's gonna spin up once, send the data down the socket, uh, and then not do anything. Um, done, right? And so now this is this is uh, waking up. Um, oh, we can't slow this down. Yeah, okay, this timeout. So this timeout again. So there's something sitting here waiting for read, and so every time it calls select. Uh, it, it's it's falling through immediately, um, but as you can see, right, we now can identify uh, our clients very easily, um, as if we got this from 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 multiple places, right? Um, so, uh, and again, uh, let's just take a look at this, and what I'll do is I'll do the same exact thing from my laptop and, and what we'll see is is that it won't be from localhost it'll actually be from like a different uh, different actual machine uh, on the network right so let's I'm gonna do this over here on my laptop you can't you won't be able to see it but you'll at least um, you'll at least get the idea of it uh, All right, so val socket equals socket localhost uh, 10301 uh, and socket val output equals socket output, output stream. Uh, and then we're going to do output dot write uh, hello server. Dot two byte array dot uh, ETF eight right okay so we're gonna run this again from a server or, or sorry from my laptop and what we should see is we should see again a different client ID we shouldn't see localhost we should see the actual address and port of this laptop right so we're gonna go ahead and run this. up here you should probably just do this in a VM um, uh, to, to really make this work but for now this is fine um, now that project doesn't compile that's good um, let's pick a project that actually compiles Could probably do this in the VM and it would have been better, but that's okay. Um, let's go here. So this is building and running here. And so again, what we should see over on here 
is that we get a connection from something that is my laptop, if this ever starts up. Uh, oh, no, 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 it can't be localhost. Uh, it's gotta be actually the remote machine. All right, so let's run this again. Yep, there we go. All right, so we, we, took, this, we took this code, right, and we, we put in the host name, or the IP address on a different machine and as you see, we are getting that inbound connection uh, with data on it, and it says that it is that you know, hey, this thing is is readable, right? Um, so so again, right? What did we what did we demonstrate? We we started this thing, and we wanted a way to kind of keep track of and identify um, these 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 different inbound connections or inbound clients, right? And we used um, we used This uh, this attribute on the uh, this this method this this attribute right this this thing that allows us to attach metadata to the keys um, so that we can keep track of who this is and then basically on every incoming connection we can identify it who it is and we we can use that for all sorts of different things right uh, you know in the future. As we keep going with this, we'll keep track of, um, we'll use it to keep track of our, our buffers uh, if we choose to go that route um, or, or kind of any other thing for a given client, right? So, um, so that's really it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, and uh, next, we'll probably actually start uh, reading and potentially even writing data uh, out, of this, out of this little server that we have here. So that's it.